Hi and welcome to another video. Today we are looking at three different uh, LC meters. Two of them are also LCR meters. On the left side I have a very old Worldcraft 492. In the middle my brand new shiny Peak Atlas LCR45. And on the right side you see an Ascal AE2204. I've assembled this myself so might contain bugs or mistakes. I think uh, I put it together correctly. But let's see. Um, I randomly grabbed uh, three different inductors and three different capacitors out of my parts box. Uh, we'll hook them up to um, the three devices, write down the results and in the end we'll probably see how far they agree and disagree. Of course I don't really know the real values of these uh, capacitors or inductors but hey that's the test. And maybe we uh, get to a conclusion which one of these three devices can be trusted. I already have a hunch, but uh, let's see. So uh, let me first uh, show you the parts I picked and then um, we'll do the measurement and at the end uh, look at the result. Okay, so here are the capacitors and inductors we will have a look at. On the top left side I have a self-wound toroid. Uh, 18 windings on a T30-2 core. Then uh, in the middle here the green bit which looks like a resistor to the untrained eye. That is a 15 microhenry inductor. And here on the right side we have a 40 microhenry uh, inductor on a ferrite core. I mean it uh, just has some plastic shrink around it. You can see the wires, you can see the uh, ferrite. Then on the bottom left we have a blue 100 picofarad capacitor. Then the brown candy in the middle is a 380, no 390 nanofarad capacitor. And on the bottom right we have a Rima 4.7 microfarad capacitor. So let's uh, hook them all up and see what the three tools tell us about them. Okay, so before we start the test let's do some calibration. So the Peak Atlas, let me see if it is in focus, yeah, you can turn it on with a single click. And currently it's in auto mode, so press and hold the menu for two seconds and then you can cycle through the menu and there's a probe compensation mode, which basically compensates uh, for the capacitance or inductance of the connection lead. So let's press enter, well too slow, already fall out of the menu. So once again, probe compensation, okay says um, short the probes then press enter. So let's do that. Like uh, this. Okay it's not in focus but I think you get the idea. Then press enter and now it's uh, well measuring I guess the capacitance or inductance or whatever of the connection lead. Takes a short while. Okay, open the probes, then press enter. Let's do that. Probes open now. Make sure they don't connect. Press enter and does another uh, measuring cycle. Not sure if you can see the menu, maybe like this. It's not so easy to film and Hold the device with your hand and get everything done correctly. Okay, probe compensation start and we are ready to go. Um, then for the Ascal LC meter, you switch it on and basically it does a initial calibration when you switch it on. Uh, if I read the manual correctly, you should not have anything connected while it does that. And uh, here I have uh, well, mispurposed a 
zip socket um, because it's easy to uh, insert the parts and you just close the le uh, lever and then you um, can measure but of course connecting this thing by itself adds uh, capacitance as you can see in a second so I've hooked it up and it already shows by simply having these two wires in parallel it already shows uh, 4.3 picofarad so that's why you have here a delta mode where you can basically null it and can say okay this is now the new reference and well it's still jumping around a bit temperature voltage whatever but um, yeah as i said i'm not really sure how much i can trust that device or basically my skills to assemble it properly right so now we are ready to uh, do the measurement uh, let's start here on the left side set the Voltcraft device to 200 microhenry i think it has a really completely useless uh, range uh, for measuring uh, inductance <laughs> you can choose between 200 henry 20 henry 2 henry 200 milli henry 20 milli henry 2 milli henry and then 200 micro henry so basically i guess for our purposes the 200 micro henry is the only useful one so let me try to get the first inductor inserted so this is the self-wound uh, toroid on a T30-2 core and it shows us, well let me write it down for later, it shows us something between 3.4 and 3.5 microhenry. So let me write that down, 3. Dot, well I'll write down 3.45 shall I? Okay, so get it out again, hook it up to the uh, Peak Atlas. It already switched off now because I'm rambling so long. Press the button. Let's have a look. And it shows us 1.58 microhenry, 1.57. Okay, let's write it down. So already completely off the Voltcraft because I think my trust is in the Peak Atlas here. And uh, now number three, which would be uh, the Askel. Obviously I have to get it into L mode. And um, unfortunately you have to do the calibration again because I accidentally calibrated for inductance uh, no for capacitance and we need to measure an inductance so what do we do here I mean basically the idea is the same uh, I need a short bridge here let's say I will um, yeah, I've just uh, put a small bridge in here and now it says, okay, the wires are already 0 0.16 microhenry. So do the delta offset nulling if the button wants me. Now it shows 0 microhenry. And now I can put in the real toroid. And see nothing because I did not properly insert it let's try again yeah I think that uh, SIF socket already has seen better days okay now we have a value it shows 1.53 microhenry okay so we have uh, Two devices who roughly agree and one which is completely off uh, yeah let's uh, take the next one here I have a fixed inductor let's see what that one does that shows um, 
17, 18 micro Henry. And it goes up. I don't know why it goes up. This is also a strange thing. The longer something is connected to this device, the more it creeps up. It doesn't have a nulling or anything. And of course, if you want to measure very small values or very, very small capacitors, uh, uh, you know, four point measurement with a Kelvin probe, you know, go one price step higher. Um, See, now it shows 17.4. Okay, let me write down 17.4. So, as I said, I'm, I'm maybe this one is <laughs> only good for resistors. I don't really know if I can trust this thing at all. Okay, so next one is the, the Peak Atlas. I think the Peak Atlas stores the probe calibration. So when you uh, switch it back on it's not lost and here it shows us 15.33 micro henry and going to the ASCAL Ah, oh, God. It shows us 40.8 micro Henry. See, we are getting a bit quicker here because uh, I don't want to keep this video too long. 14.78 now. Well, jumping around a bit. I don't know. I, I'll stick with 14.8 on my notes. Then inductor number three. Um, let me insert this into the Worldcraft. Shows thirty-eight to three micro Henry, which is closer to reality, I think. And then that's put this thing onto the ASCAL, press the button. Yeah, so this uh, is really, I think this will probably be my new favorite sort of idiot proof, which is always good for me. It shows 40.87 micro Henry. Scribble it down, I will Show the result afterwards in a PowerPoint slide or something. And number three. And we have 40.56 micro Henry on the ASCAL. Okay, so those were the inductors. Um, let me quickly do the calibration for capacitors once more off screen and then we'll jump uh, to do the capacitors. So let's start with the classical blue 100 picofarad capacitor we all use and love for our end fit half waves. Of course I have to switch to picofarad. This is not auto probing, sensing anything. It shows us 107.4 picofarad. Then let's hook this up to the ASCAL and see what it tells us. 100.7 picofarad. Ah, no, that was the peak atlas I said ASCAL. 100.7 picofarad. Now comes the ASCAL. 
and it's already wandered off again. I don't know. This thing is really a bit strange. Come on. Compensate. Go into delta mode. Okay. It shows us 101 dot creeping upwards. God knows why. 101.3. I write down 101.3. <laughs> okay. Then the next one is uh, this nice audio um, capacitor. I think it's what does it say? It's 390J, 390 nanofarad, I think. Um, so therefore I switched to the two microfarad range because the 200 nanofarad is uh, uh, out of scope. So here it's basically dot 3A2 microfarad or 3A2 nanofarad. So that also makes sense, you know, 390 printed on, 382, I can believe that. And what does the ASCAL tell us? Oops. And angling it so that you can read it. It shows us 382. Yeah, of course, um, we are in a range where holding it like this or that, also jumping a little bit, but basically let's say 382 nanofarad, which is, hooray, the same. Um, what the Worldcraft told us. And plonk it into the ASCAL and it shows 400 six dot three maybe okay and now the third capacitor this is a nice uh, vima 4.7 microfarad so let's go to the 20 microfarad range here Put it in, and the world graph tells us it's four dot eight eight. See, it's already creeping up again. I don't know. This is really it's annoying as hell. Um, of course, one could think that. Uh, the mistake is you should only measure with completely decharged capacitors. So maybe, maybe that's the problem here. I don't know. I know that the Peak Atlas is clever enough to decharge any capacitor, which is not, um, which you connect. So maybe let's do the measurement for the Peak Atlas first this time. 4.8. Four dot seven nine seven microfarad. And then well we could just short it to discharge. A resistor would be nicer, but I don't have one, so let's quickly short it out. So now it should be definitely empty. Hook it up. And do we measure something more reasonable? No, we measure again complete bollocks here with the. But now it's dropping before it was creeping up. Let's wait a bit more. What does it say? It tells us five microfarad. So before it showed us 4.8R8. So I don't know. 
<laughs> this thing is uh, a bit dodgy. Okay, and uh, last attempt to put this one into the Askel. And this one will not work, I can already tell you. Because it's out of range. Um, this thing is uh, intended to measure small values. I'll check it uh, in the documentation. What's the maximum range it should support. But uh, it cannot measure um, 4.7 microfarad. So I'm not even writing it down. I just put a dash here because the measurement is bollocks. But of course, if you don't know it and you connect a capacitor, you might think, hey, this one is definitely a bad capacitor. It shows three microfarads should have 4.7, but it's out of range. I'll put a post-it note or somewhere. It's one of these uh, um, label writers on to make sure I'm not accidentally using it for a wrong range. Okay, so here we go. Um, yeah, let me type that in into a Excel sheet and then we'll have a look at the results. So let's start with the in quotes analysis of my quick and dirty testing. I have written a script for this section for the first time, which means producing this video took an extra week, but maybe the effort is worth it as it should cut down on annoying filler words like M and R. Let me know in the comments if this part of the video is an improvement or if you prefer the old winged style, which will contain traces of nonsense, though I always try to correct them by adding some text overlay for my worst blunders afterwards. So I have used three different capacitors and three different inductors and measured them on three different instruments. Of course, these are way too few values to make any meaningful assessment, but maybe it can give us a few hints. So what do we know? We have components with a certain tolerance, we have instruments with a certain measurement accuracy, and of course, environmental conditions like temperature can have a huge impact on the measured values as well. For example, just grab one of these cheap ceramic disc capacitors, hook it up, and then just warm it up by holding it between index finger and your thumb. You will be surprised how much the capacitance changes. This is also the reason why you want good quality capacitors in your HF output low pass filters, for example. Let's first look at the inductance measurement results of the Voltcraft 492 in the only useful 200 microhenry range. Unfortunately, I could not find the original manual to get an idea of its claimed accuracy. I am sure it is some device that Conrad just relabeled under their own Voltcraft brand. From the looks, the closest I could find on the internet was an instrument called LCR24ZS. It claims for the 200 microhenry measurement range using a test frequency of 1 kHz with an accuracy of plus minus 5% RDG plus 3 DGTS. While the 40 microhenry inductor seems to measure a bit low, the two other inductors measure too high. So generally, I do not trust the inductance measurements of this device at all. The capacitance measurement in the various different ranges seem to be fine. So for a sanity check, whether you grabbed a 100 picofarad or 100 nanofarad out of the parts box, it seems suitable. Now the Peak Atlas LCR45 makes a very good impression to me. You can calibrate it for your used probe wire length and generally the thing is auto-ranging and discharges capacitors automatically before measurements. Of course, you don't want to hook it up to a charged 800 volt capacitor or something like that. The measured values all seem to make sense to me and it seems to be a no-nonsense, idiot-proof little device. If you want higher accuracy and automatic compensation for your probe wires, you have to invest double the money and go for an LCR meter with Kelvin probes. So for the average amateur radio operator that does not fiddle with microwave frequencies, this seems to be a good choice. Now to the Askel AE2204. The benefit of that device is that you can buy it as a kit and assemble it yourself. The manual that you can freely download explains exactly how the measurement is done and it is explicitly designed for very small capacitor and inductance values. 
The manual says the usable measurement range is 0.01 picofarad to about 1 microfarad, non-electrolytic, and 10 nanohenry to about 100 millihenry. The accuracy is given as plus minus 0.5% reference. Another benefit is that you can get it with an USB interface where you can log your measurements. So if you want to do binning of a big number of components, that might come in handy. I must admit, I have not used the USB interface so far. So looking at our measurement results, the inductance results seem to agree with what the LCR45 told us. The red 4.7 microhenry VMA capacitor is not measurable as already explained before. The 100 picofarad value also seems to agree with the other instruments, while the 380 nanofarad capacitor measures a bit high as 406 nanofarad. So a bit of a mixed bag here, and you have to remember to always start up the instrument without any leads connected, preferably let it warm up a bit and then use the relative or delta mode to compensate for your probe leads. It seems a little bit odd to say that you can measure below picofarad range and then not use any four point measurements. Well, adding op amps, etc., to do so would push the price point into the range where you can get a readily built Chinese LCR meter with Kelvin probes already. I'm a bit unsure how far I can trust my self-assembled device. The measured values seem to be in the right ballpark, agreeing with the LCR45, but I used it, for example, to wind my 110 microhen recoil for my NFET half wave, and the result was that the wire after the coil was way shorter than expected to get it resonant on 80 meters. It might have been the environment in my garden acting as an extra capacitance that led to that, or it might have been the AE2024 showing too high values. Well, there is a German saying, wer viel misst, 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 which really translates to one who measures a lot, measures a lot of crap. So my summary at the moment would be, forget the inductance measurement of the Voltcraft device completely. The capacitance measurements seem to be usable, but of course it is an old device and choose through nine volt batteries. And now that I own the LCR45, I will probably use that one instead of the Voltcraft device anyway. The ASCAL is maybe the right device when you want to measure really small values, but you have to be really careful with the calibration and using the delta mode and not moving your probe wires too much after setting the delta mode or the error you introduce with that will completely ruin your measurements. Okay, that was it for today. Uh, in the next video, we will look at my eBay purchased Kenwood TS50S with the peak ESR70 and tackle the SMD capacitor replacement. This will be a challenge on its own as a number of capacitors are dangerously close to connectors. So I already see myself ruining the radio. So for the moment, 73 from my side in Amy, and happy holidays. Cheerful.